Hello there and welcome once again to my little RT corner on YouTube. It's actually after two o'clock in the afternoon here in the UK and I'm actually turning to getting something done other than just sketching. Um, I woke with a bit of a migraine today and it's taken me until now to be able to hopefully talk coherently, think a little bit more coherently. We shall see. So what I thought I'd do today because I'm not quite with it still and um, I'll be fine don't panic don't worry <laughs> I get these from time to time for whatever reason and some you know headache pills and a bit of peace and quiet and calm down time works wonders and I actually haven't had to I haven't needed to have a nap to sleep this off which is good so perhaps not migraine but you know certainly a headache severe enough for me to need some quiet time so I thought I'd do some quiet time drawing and I'm going to use a piece of my of the paper I co I've coloured this with the Neo Colour 2s. I showed this one yesterday and I've just cut it in two essentially. Um, unfortunately I mismeasured completely one. Yeah so perhaps I'm not all that coherent. There we are. But before I start drawing, I'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for subscribing to the channel, for being here with me. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. It is free. It only costs you a tiny, tiny bit of energy to click on the subscribe button. And if you want to know when I'm uploading videos, or I've uploaded a video rather, click, click the bell button. Thank you so much for the comments. And again, if you're sharing art with me, I haven't caught up with social media yet, but I will whilst the video is processing and uploading and doing whatever it needs to do. So this is what I did this morning. I'll show you because it's a glimpse in a, a sketchbook of mine. You know, I have one of many. So, um, let's talk is PJ Crafty asked if I would do some whimsical people. And I just move some of my books out of the way. You won't see the whole page, but you'll get the idea. So I've got some whimsical people here. And I'm not, eh, you know, they're okay. I used um, a favourite artist of mine as inspiration. Not copied exactly, but trying to work it out. And then I did some more, which got a bit more my style of drawing. Which is okay. I mean, you know, they're all right. But you know, they don't actually feel right to me. But I had a look yesterday at a course on domestic I'd started called The Character Factory. And I think it's Adolfo Serres who does it. I could be wrong there. And I went back and had a look and I thought, right, let's start, start with heads. And I didn't go right back to the beginning of the course, but one of the exercises was to fill a page with face shapes, random shapes. And then you start drawing faces on them. And this is my page. I actually started over here. I used coloured pencils to draw in the details of these coloured ones. And whatever shape I put down, I just did my best to come up with a face. And then you can tell the ones I've done today because they're all very robotic looking and strange and skull like. I think it reflects my mind. But I think I've got some of these I'd like to turn into characters. Um, in comparison, my attempts at people faces are very, very cartoony kawaii. That's about the best one. That one's not too bad. But um, I haven't really, I'm still working my way out. I, I really like that one. There's something quite zen about it. It'd be a zen robot, perhaps. But um, yeah, so strange times this morning for me. But I thought you'd like to have a look because... This is a place for me to try things out and things don't always work out. A lot of the others I've actually used just a, um, it's a 2B, I'm sure they're 2B um, pencils. And you can see some of the shapes I haven't filled in with faces. You literally just draw shapes and try not to make them regular or symmetrical particularly, um, just to add character and you don't have to stick to the shape. If you want me to show you how I do this, I will. I'll go through it and, and everything like that because it, it's actually quite fun to do and it's other things I can draw on. Um, I, I draw upon. 
<laughs> Use for inspiration, draw upon. I've already drawn on them. So I've got one of my dot grid um, visual dictionaries out and I've opened it to this page completely at random. And I actually think I've used this page before, but I thought let's draw some, let's, let's do some drawing of things that are botanical to go on this, this page. And I think I'm going to arrange these as if I'm doing a, a drawing that would, you know, one of my larger drawings. And to do that, first I need some glasses. Always a good plan so I can see what I'm doing. Though if my head's far, far enough away from the paper, I can see, but I don't work all that far away. Okay, so I think that what I'll do is in the, somewhere, it's probably not in the middle, but off to one side and perhaps up a bit. I'm going to start by drawing, perhaps not too far up and away. One of my current favourite kinds of motifs to use, which is where we've got three ovals arranged together. And I will zoom in because I suspect I'm going to be drawing a bit smaller than I would normally. So I think that would help you. There we go. And then inside I've put a smaller oval and I've left a little space there for a highlight. Now, the chances are that once I finish this drawing, I'm likely to go back here and uh, fill those, those in with white. But So I could have just made them all black, but the choice is yours. So I think I'm going to do this and then I think we'll have a smaller shape. I've made no effort to make this circular in any kind of way. I've deliberately made it an odd shape because I just think it would look, I just think it looks a bit more interesting. And normally I'd put another band round or perhaps a wider band and so on. But I think today I might use some petal shapes. Now the pen I'm using is a Micron PN. So it's got a solid plastic tip, which I will no doubt wreck fairly soon. But um, they do last longer than the other ones, I must say that with me, the ordinary Microns. Nice thing is the mixed media paper I added this um, the neo colours too is quite rough and I don't really I don't really enjoy drawing on it with pens. But here the neo colours have made it that little bit so smoother and softer on the surface, a little bit slicker. And of course I love the vibrancy of the colours. And I haven't mucked about with them today at all. I'm not so keen, for some reason I find the word play with um, doesn't sit well with me. I think I prefer the word experiment. Perhaps that's because I'm a scientist and perhaps I'm not completely in tune with my inner child. I might like to play. But it is, it's just having some fun and seeing what happens. So I think that's a really nice shape to grow some things from. And... I am going to grow some things. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the outline of, of these. And they're going to be sort of weird, almost flowering shape, but fairly oval. So if you wanted to draw a pencil oval in first, by all means do so. And I am going to put a hole in the middle of them just like this, and then this bit I am going to colour in black. Like so. So it looks like there is a hole there. And I also think I'm going to add some little lines there. Hopefully you can see, I made the middle one here straight, but the other ones I started bending off to the side to try to give that a sense that we've got some curving going on here. Now this is the hardest bit because I want to imagine 
this stem coming out here and going here. We're using the edges of this hole in the middle as the guide for how we want those to connect. And that I'm quite happy with. I'll do more, don't panic. Because one on its own isn't very interesting, is it? And I'm just thickening the lines to the left and the bottom. Just to give some dimension. And this is underneath and this is kind of leftish. So that'll be fine. And perhaps I will just pop perhaps a couple of lines of V-shape and a couple of V-shapes, I think, in the bottom there, just to add some dimension there. And that actually works quite well, shadow. And the sh by using triangles that flare out at the bottom, it also gives that suggestion that this is curved. Your eye sort of interprets it without actually you thinking about it. OK, so let's do another one of these. Now, I want these to sort of like follow the curve of this motif they're growing out of. So I can use this one here and I'm going to overlap them as well. And I've made the bottom edge nicely frilly as well, haven't I? Got, got to have a bit of frilliness every now and again. Frivolous frilliness. There we go. Let's just pop that hole in there. Ooh, that's bent. It's a bit almost like, um, almost kidney bean shaped, almost, but not quite. And again, I'm going to fill the centre in. I'm leaving a bit of a... I didn't have as much space here, I think, as I did in this one. So perhaps I'll just do that. That feels a bit better. And then I'm going to start on this edge. Imagine I'm drawing this line and then curving it inwards and then out again. And I'm just going to pop one of these curvy triangles at the bottom and we'll pop some thicker, thicker line there. I love the contrast. I love the black against this bright background. It's really nice, a nice contrast. I think the colours are dark enough here. You could use white or another colour if you wanted. White would be quite fun, I think. Though I've tried drawing in white on coloured backgrounds from time to time and I'm never quite happy with the results. But perhaps I'll try it on these, not the other piece, but I'll make some paper perhaps that is, it's got quite dark or intense colours on and see if I like that. OK, so I think we need a third one. Now it's figuring out where I want to put this third one and I think I might put this here. So I do use the rule of odds. It's not really a strict rule. But I know that if I use an odd number of motifs, if I've got just a small number of motifs, that is, when you get up to set, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whatever, um, depending on how closely they're clustered or how you put them in, then nobody's really going to notice too much, as long as you don't make it obvious. Well, I think your eye does, or your mind does notice it. I've got to imagine where this would finish on this side, so I'm going to imagine it there. It's not so critical because you can't see the edge; it's just getting the shape of the stem right. Just thicken that. Perhaps a couple there. So that, I'm quite happy with that. So they're quite fun to do. Could add things like rows of dots going in the middle of these petalish shapes or other things in there. But I'm going to leave it just as it is because I, th I think I like it. Although I am tempted to put some dots around the edge of some of these. But I'll think about that as I'm working and decide. The same way this really needs something here, but I'll use a finer pen to add some detail in. So those are quite fun. I like I like things like this. So much so I've decided I'm going to do a couple more on this side. So let's have a look here. Let's get this one in. Now I'll put this the right way up, you know, 
this is up so I can get this shadow in, you know, this bit in here because it won't be right at the top. Can you see they've gradually crept across further and further this way as they're bending? So this way they're going to get further to the, you know, top and right is what we're looking at for this, this um, little bit there. And I've got to fill this in as well. Just do that there before I forget that bit. And then we can have this coming down and like that. And this one coming in and out like that. Let's be consistent with these little triangle shapes there. And then just one more. That's a very strange one but I will work with it. You really can't go wrong with these. You just work with whatever shape you, you make. Now I could put, I am going to pop my inner circle here, just to, like this, fill that in. And then got to work out how to add this and I think like that would work because it would meet there and then this one perhaps would come out like that and again we'll just pop those little triangles in and that could actually go all the way around and that would make quite a nice pattern shall I do that shall I shall I shall I shall I shall I <laughs> it would it would look really interesting Possibly. Mm, don't know. No, it could get. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Because I really do like those. I do. No, I won't. I may put another layer out here. So it's almost like. You like hydrangeas. You get that ball of flowers. Well, this might not be quite a ball, but you get that, that grouping, that dome shaped grouping of flowers, which would be quite nice. Okay. So on. Elsewhere, let's have a look at what could we put next door to these. I'm looking at my my pages, my um, my um, sources of inspiration here. And what I'm going to do on this for these for the next one is I'm going to draw. It's a teardrop shape but it's got an ex a longer extended stem here and at the top of the teardrop I've just taken a little notch out. I'll tell you what I'll do in a moment. I'll draw that in pencil and show you how, how to do it in pencil. Here I'm going to put a little bit sticking out as if there's a seed or something just growing out of it. And again I'm going to Thicken the lines, increase the weight of the lines, the thickness of the lines to the left and to the, the bottom. And then to create the rest of the stem, I'm just going to put lots of tiny little ovals together, almost like perks without a border. So that gives an interesting texture in there. Okay, and I do want some more texture inside this. And I think what I might do is just pop some little oval shapes, almost like seeds on a strawberry, aren't they? But instead of having the seeds poking out, I'm going to thicken the line at the top of these shapes. So it looks like they are sunk back a little bit. There we go. And for this one, I'm just going to put a row of little dots around the bottom to give a bit of extra shadow there. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so I'm going to start by drawing with the pencil pushed out to be a good idea. 
this bottom stem. I'm going to leave a gap here though because I want some of these beads. And then I'm going to draw this like a almost teardrop shape like that. So that's the basic shape. Oh, it looks a bit like a tennis racket. There we go. And I'm going to take a U-shaped wedge out of that. I am, no, I'm going to keep the sides pretty straight. So I can then use this as my guide for drawing the outside edge of this. I can just complete that as an oval there. Okay, let's pop these. See, that makes it look like it's coiled. I'm not drawing a spiral. I'm not going to try and create a spiral on such a small area. But that just gives that impression that it might be coiled and spiraled. Again, I'm going to add some weight underneath there. And underneath here as well. A little bit at the top. So what's going down the sides of those. And that will work quite nicely. I am turning this up this way again so that I can add some of these around and below. This here. You can put as many or as few on as you like, or if you choose to do something else, you could just put some simple circles there or dots, or use lines to fill them in. I've just decided on this. Partly because I also think if I decide to add any metallic inks or paints or pens, those would be a nice place to do that. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do for the next one. This is getting... I'm having to check where everything is here. Um, check if I got the light on. Yeah. Okay. So here I'm going to draw this section in there. And then I'm going to imagine that it comes up. Up and around here. Put the U shape in and add my seed there. I do it this way. I'm still on camera. You can see that I'm putting some dark areas in and I'll add these here. By dark areas I mean the thickness of the line, you know, increasing the thickness of the lines to suggest volume and shadow. And then I'll just turn this back around a little bit so I can add these shapes there. Perhaps one just sticking up there. There we go. And I didn't pop any shadow around these ones, but I will now. And adjusting how deep I put those in and so on until I'm happy with the illusion of shape that it gives. So those are actually quite fun. I like those. I do. So let's do another one. So I need to bring this up going to try and keep the u-shape above the stem if it if it isn't above the stem it's no great problem none whatsoever you know they're organic shapes and you know things in nature aren't perfect perfect and that's great for us as artists because things don't have to be perfect you just need to capture the essence of things mind you I don't know whether this exists in nature. I can't remember where I got the inspiration from, whether this is from something that occurs in nature and it's something that I've adapted for my own style, a variation of. Truth is, I don't know. <laughs> I should perhaps really keep track of 
the inspirations and the references and so on, but... But, I, you know, it might have been a figment of my imagination entirely. I doubt it because I do tend to work on variants. So that works quite nicely. And then I just want one more. And I think this one more I'm going to have perhaps coming out here. And then the bottom would be there. Nobody's going to check to see if you've got this exactly right behind there because you can't see it. But I am going to put the bobbly bits in there. I'm still going to do my line thicknesses where they matter. I'm still going to do this. And I'm going to add some of these shapes around here. Notice how it's changed from the first one I did here where everything is all sort of like straight. And I suddenly I realised as I was drawing them that I needed to have them going around, almost radiating around the central bit here. Um, a bit like petals and it, it helps to give you that sense of volume as well. So those are looking pretty OK, I think. OK, now where did I find those? Oh, over there. Are you ready for something that's similar but a bit more complicated? Oh, I think you might be. So I'm going over to this side. And I'm going to start with the top, like I did here. But this top is going to be... shaped like a peanut. I was trying to think what shape that was, and it is definitely peanut. That's definitely a peanut shape, isn't it? Which is fab. Then I'm going to put a couple of dots, a line and a couple more dots. And that gives the suggestion that we've got a lip here, though it may disappear over the other side. So we put the dots in for that. And then here we've got it gets more bulbous up here, but this one I'm going to have, I'm going to join my lines around here and it's going to bend towards the centre line and away from the centre line. So again from here it will bend towards the centre line and then away from the centre line. And then I can just pop. I'm going to pop something lovely and big there, put this back so I can work out where the line thicknesses and shadows need to be of the line thicknesses. And I think I might want this as a kind of hole there, which will be fun. But I'm not going to put a hole in the top. I, I guess it's a bit like a strange mushroom if you if you want. Um, but it's not a mushroom. OK, so let's draw another peanut shape here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to put in this line, perhaps a couple there. And again, we're going to draw pointing into the middle and out and away and into the middle and out away. It's a bit like a vase shape, a weird, you know, one of those necked vases, I suppose. Pop that in there. And again, I'm going to turn this so it's the right way up. And I can work out that for this to be a hole, I need to put a line to the top and the right. And then everything else, I need to thicken the lines that are to the left and the bottom. So actually, this would need a bit of thickness there as well. This one is pointing towards the top of the page, this line. So don't need to thicken that one. And I'm not going to thicken the ones that are the, the inner lines that give some structure to that shape. So one more there. Let's have a look. 
So again, I'm going to do a peanut shape. It's not perfect. I've made the bottom of it much flatter than the top, but that's okay because it'll work no matter what we do. So bend it in and round and out, in and out. And I'll have another nice big circle just there. Again, turn this this way up so I can add the line thicknesses to where the lines are on the left and bottom. So a little bit of thickness there on that one. A little bit there actually on that one. And uh, here. Now I've got three there, but I've got a gap here, so I think I'll be able to fit a fifth one in, a four, the fourth one in, here, and have them overlapping quite a bit. So that one will go there, and I will just squish that in. Let's make that nice and thick. And this one will be to the top, which is up here and right there. So that'll be better. There we go. There's that one. And we and for me, I really feel I need another one because it's those, um, you know, the, the odd numbers I like to put things in groups. So I might as well add one here. like so, and I'm not going to get a full base in because the base perhaps would go there and be hidden behind there, but I can get some of that circle in there. And if I'm going to add um, color or texture to this, then it would help to bring this out. And certainly if I add something to that circle, it would suggest we got five there. So we're beginning to get things that are growing, which is great. OK, how do we do the next lot? Well, I could choose to use, to carry on with these and perhaps put some of these on the other side and, you know, mix and match them. But I rather fancy using some different things. And I'm going to put some things that are on stalks. Quite long, thin stalks here. And I'm going to create a little placeholder for whatever comes on the top. So I've just put a, a tiny little, it's almost a rectangle, but it's sort of like curved at the bottom. There's a tiny dimple at the top. And I'm going to put almost, almost a teardrop shape at the top here. But instead of joining up, I'm going to have them going up like that. So we create bunny ears. But again, I'm going to put something like a seed in there. Now these can grow off each other in branches almost. Because I think that's how they would grow. So I'll put another one of these little, almost like cups there, or the bottoms of acorns. So I'm going to bring this around. I'm not going to close it. I'm going to leave a gap there. Then I'm going to take this one up straight, this one up straight, curve down to give me a U shape and back up and fill that in. And we can keep on doing this until we're happy with what we've got. And they can grow at different angles. And they can sneak round behind each other. Doesn't matter what this line is here, it will connect itself quite sensibly. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you're not drawing them that way, then by all means, use a pencil and draw the outline in. Now 
as you get used to the shape, you'll start to do as I'm, I'm doing. I hope you will anyway, if you're drawing along. And start to draw these in one, one fluid motion if you can. It doesn't matter if you don't. It doesn't make a bit of difference. You draw them as you want them to be. And as you draw them, you might find that you prefer a particular shape. So for this one, I've made kind of a V shape there instead of U shape. But with that in, it still looks like it belongs. I actually like that one. So where's the other? Where's the one I used? This is the one I used. Oh, let me get it up here. So I'm going to... Add the variant in here that I've just drawn. As a reminder that you can have U shapes or V shapes. There you go. I do make use of it. I do when I come across something I particularly like. I will add it. Okay, so let's have one that crosses up here. Just enough shape in between them for space in between them for that U shape, or for the the, the shape of the the seed or the berry. And you've got quite a broad bit at the top, but that's fine. Again, they're all similar. They may not be identical, but they are similar, and that similarity is what joins them together. It's not the identical nature of them. I like that V-shaped one so much, I've done it again. And I think we can have another one, perhaps here. Growing behind, and perhaps another one here, which I'll use somehow to try and close the space up. I don't think I'll manage to close the space entirely. But I certainly can get that in there. And uh, I think I can pop one last one in here. And that will close that space up. Oh, that's a very strange one on the side, but again, it is what it is. And in the grand scheme of things, these form a pattern rather than anything else. Now I've got this, this is the top. So I'm going to use that now to thicken the lines to the left and the bottom. Yeah, and I think for this, I'm going to add a little row of dots underneath that berry, just to add some pattern and texture inside the inside here. Perhaps fifth one. It's that thing of odd numbers. I'm not obsessive because I don't know if I've got an odd number of these now. I've got above. I suppose five. I've definitely got above five. And it doesn't feel as important if I've got more than five. To count them necessarily, as long as they're higgledy-piggledy and your eye can't, or your brain won't try and put them into some kind of, you know, groupings of four and four or two and two or three and three. I'm sure nature does even numbers, clumps of things in even numbers. But there is just something nice about being able to organise things in odd-numbered groups. I thought I only had four there. So... So one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay. So where I put the shadows or the thicker lines on these has changed because we're now looking at where the bottom is and the left is under here. So I have got a bit of a left side here, but I've also got one that's curving over. Oh, a bit of a left there. You just have to trust the process of adding the thicker lines in and just follow the same rule each time. But again, it's not all that important if you get it wrong as long as it looks consistent all at the same time. Oh, I could see those little gap there. So I've got that. I'll zoom out. Excuse my arms, putting some shadow on there. You can see that I've already done most probably about a quarter of this sheet. And I think I'll carry on with this in the next video. I'm not going to add any colour or anything to this. It's pure pen drawing for me, draw, for the sake of me drawing. And this has taken me, what, 40 minutes to do. So you can see this would take a good couple of hours. But it's so enjoyable to do and I can lose myself in it. And the repetition of motifs. I mean, how many motifs have we done here today? There's this one, so that's one, two, three, four, five motifs. Oh, there we are. Nice odd number. And all looking complicated, but relatively easy to do. I think the hardest thing here is where we overlap things, working out how to overlap them, and then working out where to thicken the lines and put shadows, you know, thicken the lines to create shadows and it's sticking to those particular rules. You know, to the left and the right, if you want something to look like it's sticking out of the paper, top and right, so left and bottom, if you want it to appear, it's sticking, you know, growing out above the paper, doming out. And top and right, if you want it to feel that you've got a shadow going inwards. And it's, you just follow that all the way around on your design. Just stop and think logically and it will always work. Failing that, that's how I do it. In Zentangle, they do the same thing to each motif. It doesn't matter about light source or anything. So, for example, where I've put the thick line on this circle, I do the same on each one. Where I've put shadows on these, I do the same on each one. And you, you're consistent around there. Either way, it will work. So I'm going to say thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed looking. You know, I'm, I'm quite excited about working on this coloured paper. I enjoy working on coloured paper. It breaks that whiteness. It means that you, you've already done something on the page and you're more likely to want to draw or enjoy drawing, if that makes sense. There's not that fear of what if I make a mistake. And really, if you do make a mistake, it, it's not important in the grand scheme of things. You either work with it or you find a way to incorporate it or just create a black square that you're going to fill with white patterns afterwards or metallic patterns. There are always ways around doing things. And, um, but there's something lovely about working on colour rather than plain white. Um, it automatically adds some character and a feeling to your, to your drawing. And this is very warm and cosy looking, even with the little splashes of green at the bottom. You know, it, it speaks of sunrise or sunset and warm summer days, perhaps. I don't know. You know you'll have your own opinions on that. But um, so I feel I want to add some gold later on. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope to see you again. If you're watching this on Wednesday, Thursday, tomorrow's Thursday for me. It's the 11th of May today. Tomorrow's Thursday. That means I need to concentrate on getting the colouring template done for the Facebook group. And um, 
So that's my job tomorrow. So I tend not to post videos on Thursdays or Sundays because Sundays is a pain in the backside day for me, for time. I get little chunks here and there in between other things that I get I'm involved in through the day. And so um, I, I just say no, it's just too much to do. I get in too much of a flap and I, and this week I'm going to need the time to draw because I've had two days without drawing for the book. Um, it was yesterday I got striped. Oh, I, I don't know what. Well, I slept late yesterday. Today I had a migraine. Oh. Anyway, take care. Look after yourselves. And I'll see you again soon. Oh, and don't forget, be creative. Bye for now.